Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the Market Site Studio, we have Jorgi Klemberg. He is the CEO of Sophia uh, Genetics, and we also have Ross Mukin, the CFO of Sophia Genetics. We're going to take a look at data driven medicine and how it's the future of healthcare. It is great to have you both with us. Welcome to Market Site. And, Jorgi, I want to kick it off with you. Yesterday, September 20th, was the first ever investor day for Sophia Genetics. Give us some of the high level overview and some announcements that were made. Indeed. So a year ago, we went public in the, in the NASDAQ, right? And so this was our first investor day. And uh, first, we explained our story to the market. And so explained that we're a cloud native platform operating in healthcare and serving two segments, right? So the biopharma segment as well as the hospital segment. And these in these areas that are pretty important, so rather others and in, co in on oncology. And uh, as you know, so we are serving these markets while uh, they are producing data, they add the data into our platform, and we're being paid on consumption. And so yesterday, I would say the highlights of uh, the uh, Investor Day were new um, partnerships that we announced. So a great partnership with a big institution that you all know, which is Memorial Sloan Catering, mm -hmm. that is going to leverage on Sophia platform to further impact around the world. And we're basically going to combine some of their technologies with our platform to go beyond what they are doing today in New York. And another partnership that we're very excited to announce uh, yesterday was a partnership with a biotech uh, company called Bantless Bio, which is going to go into something called um, extra chromosomal DNA, something that might be pretty important in the field of oncology. Beyond that, I would say that we are being, uh, making clear that we are growing sustainably and given some numbers about uh, how we think uh, our growth trajectory will be in the next years. All right, Ross, I'll ask you to elaborate on that. Yeah, so in terms of the, uh, the growth trajectory, we talked about yesterday, 100 million plus in revenue by 2025. That's very exciting for us uh, and a big milestone that we're looking forward to. And additionally, we gave some incremental color on how we're going to do that in terms of investments. And so what I can say there is not only are we growing at a very attractive rate, but in a sustainable and capital efficient way. And so we've got su sufficient capital today, post our IPO to execute on those strategic plans. Jorge, let's talk about data-driven medicine. Explain to us what that is and why it is the future of healthcare. Sure. So I would say uh, over the last years, what we have seen is the emergence of new type of technologies in healthcare. And uh, you heard about genomics, definitively, right? And there are a number of genomics companies that are listed publicly in the NASDAQ as well. And I think uh, this type of new data modalities enable us now to be more objective about what is driving a disease, but as well to be able to follow how patients are responding to treatment by looking at this type of data modality. And so while in the past, I think the medicine was very much kind of an hypothesis-driven medicine, now by gathering those data, such as genomics, imaging data, clinical data, outcomes, putting that in a cloud platform, this enables you to create a collective intelligence and bring a more objective, informed perspective to help oncologists take better decisions. And I think that's a big revolution Sophia is uniquely positioned to tackle. Yeah, and Ross, it sounds as if it'll make it more efficient, if you will, you know, when it comes to, to operations and cost and so forth. Yes, obviously, as we look to our customers, right, we're obviously trying to bring them a lot of new information and, and insights they wouldn't be able to gather on their own, but also in many cases, save money. Right. right, in terms of uh, their own setup, but also for patients, right, and lower the cost uh, of healthcare in, in many areas like oncology and rare disease, such that a lot of different communities that normally would not have access to these types of solutions can. And so if you look at it, we have 750 uh, institutions around the world that were deployed in, and that's in 70 plus countries, including places in the world where you know, would not think of them as, as necessarily leading from an oncology perspective. So you think about you know, examples like Memorial Sloan Kettering, to be able to bring their technology that serves the community here in New York to all parts of the world, it's incredibly exciting at a cost that folks can afford. Right, and so let's expand upon that, Jorgen, when we think about the economic impact of cloud native software within the healthcare space, it will also allow for quicker insights, right? Definitely. So the benefits are basically accelerating turnaround time and as well accelerated adoption so to precision medicine initiatives that are a must, but would take time if you wouldn't have these cloud capabilities and these algorithmic capabilities that we're bringing to the hospitals that are working with us. Yeah. And then beyond that, when we refer to the pharma, these data are extremely important because eventually it enables them to develop more targeted drugs quicker. 
and quicker means probably that development time being quicker, it's less expensive and so more affordable drugs into the market. Right. And, and Russ, to wrap up here, when you think about the healthcare space more holistically, how far ahead is it when it comes to cloud adoption and, and data-driven medicine? Are we in the early innings here or is it um, being adopted on a mass scale? Yeah, we're, we're certainly in the nascent stages of this market, but I think what's being proven with the scale we already have that I spoke about before, and then with the types of institutions and the types of pharma companies that we're now attracting, I don't think it's too long before we start going after you know, much bigger uh, swaths of data and eventually develop into a much bigger market. I think, frankly, it's going to be good for everyone, right? right? Because ultimately, we want to have our health informed actually by data such that when we take a decision, we know what the likely outcome is for an individual. And so I think, again, we're at the early stages, but there's a ton of progress, and we look forward to obviously updating everyone on how we're going to drive that as the leader in the space. Yeah, always need more efficiency in the healthcare space, that's for sure. Thank yes. you both so much for joining us at MarketSite, and thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.